the nature of light. So we're going to look at how different scientists have viewed light. Uh, and we start with Newton. Newton has a particle model of light. Particles from a light source stimulate the sense of sight upon entering the eye. So you can imagine that the, the light source produces light particles and they will uh, hit the eye and stimulate the sense of sight. So that was Newton's explanation. Huygens has wave model of light, which is saying that light is some sort of wave motion. Uh, later, we will talk about Huygens principle, where you will see that when a, a plane light wave hits a, a slit, it's going to have all points in the slit acting as uh, point sources of light. Young has the first clear demonstration of wave nature of light. That's Young's double slit interference experiment. So you can see uh, the wave nature of something can be proven by uh, seeing the wave properties like interference, diffraction, uh, reflection, refraction, etc. So this was clearly demonstrated by Young. Maxwell uh, says light is a form of high frequency electromagnetic wave. Uh, solving Maxwell's equations, especially the third and the fourth one uh, regarding the uh, path integrals of electric field and magnetic field, we can see that uh, the solutions to the uh, to the simultaneous solutions to Maxwell's equations show that the electromagnetic waves travel with the speed of light, which is a, a direct a proof. Hertz has a clear experimental confirmation uh, using the spark gap device. So you have an LC uh, circuit which creates uh, sparks and those sparks uh, can be detected by another LC circuit which has a variable gap uh, that was Hertz experimental confirmation and Einstein uh, photoelectric effect uh, Einstein can explain the experiment of photoelectric effect when light strikes a metal surface electrons are ejected with a kinetic energy independent of the light intensity so uh, with Max Planck, the energy of a light wave is present in particles called photons, or we can say quasi-particles. These are basically packets of energy and they each have an energy HF. So H is Planck's constant, 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. F is the frequency of light. So uh, at the end of this uh, discussion basically we realize that light has a dual nature with wave and particle like characteristics so uh, how do we measure the speed of light historically when we look at crude measurements performed by galileo galilei uh, galileo galilei we see that uh, he has placed observers he has placed a source of light in one tower and an observer in another tower and asked the observer to tell uh, after the light was emitted uh, how long it took to uh, detect the light. But the transit time is much less than the reaction time of the observer, so it, these experiments basically failed in this estimation. Reumer's method, this is based on astronomical data of Reumer, Huygens estimated the lower limit for speed of light as 2.3 times 10 to 8 meters per second. So these are some observations, astronomical observations, that have led to uh, an estimation for the speed of light. Now, Fizos method, uh, this is a very nice uh, way to uh, measure the speed of light. We have a tooth wheel, which is called Fizos wheel, uh, which has uh, these teeth, uh, so this is uh, A, uh, an opening, and an obstacle B, and an opening C, etc. Since this tooth wheel is basically rotating at an angular speed omega, and placed at a large, placed at a large distance uh, from a mirror uh, at a distance d, so we send light pulses, uh, and when these light pulses go and hit the mirror, they will reflect back and hit the tooth wheel. So delta T is the time tra transit time for one 
one round trip of the light pulse and the number of teeth on the wheel are 360. So omega is the angular speed of the tooth wheel. Then the transit time delta t is basically delta theta, the angular displacement of the tooth wheel divided by uh, omega, the angular speed. And uh, uh, so from, if we see the light basically not hitting, uh, so a slit, so it, it's basically it hits an obstacle. So we send the light, but we don't see the reflection next. That means we have a 100, 1 over 720 degrees turn. And from the known angular speed, we can calculate transit time and 2D, the distance to hit the mirror uh, and then uh, the to come back so the total trip time would be the total trip distance would be 2d so speed of light would be 2d divided by delta t so let's see an example assume Fizos wheel has 360 teeth and rotates at 27.5 revolutions per second when a pulse of light passing through opening a is blocked by tooth b on its return so it passes through A and it's blocked by tooth B on the return. If the distance to the mirror is 7.5 kilometers, what is the speed of light? So the number of teeth on uh, Fizos wheel is 360. The angular speed omega is 27.5 revolutions per second and the distance to the mirror is 7500 meters now we observe that the pulse passes tooth a and returns to a obstacle B. So you can see that uh, it goes through the opening A and then hits the next obstacle uh, B. The time of travel for this light pulse will be the total angular displacement divided by the angular speed of the tooth wheel. Now this will be because we have an angular uh, displacement of 1 over 720 revolutions and the angular speed is 27.5 revolutions per second uh, the transit time we find to be 50.5 microseconds then the speed of light will be the total travel distance d d 2d 2d divided by delta t the, tra uh, the transit time so this will give us <clears throat> 2 times 7,500 meters divided by 50.5 microseconds, 10 to minus sec 6 seconds. So this gives us a value for the speed of light, uh, 2.97 times 10 to 8 radians, uh, sorry, meters, uh, meters per second. So where, does, where is the error coming from in this calculation? Well, uh, we don't know exactly where it hits on this obstacle B. So obstacle B has a width. It's not a point. So we have an uncertainty coming from uh, where it hits and also where exactly at which point in uh, opening A did the light pulse pass through, we don't know. So because of that we have an estimation of the speed of light and the estimation is 2.97 10 to 8 meters per second okay so we talked about the nature of light basically <clears throat> there are some people who argue that uh, light is a collection of particles and some people who argue that light has a wave character now newton's particle model of light uh, basically suggests that light source produces particles that hits our eye and stimulates the sense of sight. Huygens has the wave model of light and <clears throat> 
basically suggesting that light is some sort of wave motion. And Huygens' principle we will talk about later uh, is actually explaining how light behaves when it goes through a slit. Uh, a narrow slit. Uh, Young has the first clear demonstration of the wave nature of light using the double slit interference experiment. Maxwell, Maxwell's equations show that light is a form of high frequency electromagnetic wave. Hertz has an experimental confirmation for the electromagnetic wave being a, a basically light being a sort of electromagnetic wave using the spark gap device. Einstein explained the photoelectric effect when, that is, when light strikes a metal surface, electrons are ejected with a kinetic energy independent of the intensity of light, but they depend on the frequency of the light. And that's because with Max Planck, uh, the energy of a photon is HF, so photon is the particle that carries the energy packets in light, and uh, Planck's constant is 6.6310 to minus 34 joules second. So the end conclusion is that light has a dual nature with both wave-like and particle-like characteristics. The early measurements for the speed of light failed. Galilei's experiment putting observers in towers uh, failed because the transit time of light was much less than the reaction time. Uh, Reumer's method gives an estimation Huygens used Reumer's data, astronomical data, to estimate the speed of light. Piso's method is based on a tooth wheel which rotates at an angular speed omega. Uh, through the openings of this wheel, we send light pulses uh, at a distance d to a mirror, and then we observe the reflected uh, light. Uh, and from the uh, angular displacement in the tooth field uh, divided by the angular speed omega, we can find the transit time of light knowing the, trans the total travel distance, we can calculate the speed of light. And you can see that this only gives us an estimation. Uh, for example, if light goes through opening A and hits B, so we don't see the reflected light, uh, <clears throat> that is basically uh, corresponding to 1 over 720 revolutions, provided that we have 360 teeth. From the known angular speed, we calculate the transit time and the speed of light is estimated because we don't know exactly at which point the light pulse passes through uh, in the opening A and then it hits the obstacle B. So we can estimate, uh, we can get a nice estimation of the speed of light using a uh, Fizos wheel method.